all right i'm, I'm gonna stop there because i can literally just continue playing <laughs> their entire album but their album is completely worship music i've been stuck on it for like two months now <laughs> And um, it's very, very powerful. So I did post the link up for you ladies if you're interested in listening to it on YouTube, download it or whatever the case. Um, but I highly recommend if you're going to listen to it, have a box of tissues because it would have you, it, it, it'll have you all over the place. Okay. <laughs> um, and how do you share links to videos on tablets? I normally just copy and paste the link. I'm not sure. I mean, that's normally what I do. I just copy and paste. Um, let me just look at the messages. I mean, the messages. What am I talking about? The comments. <laughs> but yes, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So I'm, I'm a little tired, just a little bit. Just, just a little tired. But we're going to get through. So before I begin, I'm going to pray us and run through all of the different tools i guess that i use and then we're gonna dive right in so i'm just gonna do a quick quick prayer you guys know how i am with my prayers we quick and short <laughs> so heavenly father we thank you for this morning we thank you for the opportunity just to wake up and that you decided to breathe the breath of life into us lord i'm asking that you come into this study that you use me as your mouthpiece so that your people can get a better understanding of your word lord i pray that we're able to glean from this text today and that we're able to apply it into our lives lord and have a great study session and i pray that i end on a good time <laughs> amen so um yeah yes lisa those 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 songs will have you in the spirit <laughs> and like i said I, I i play the album from start to finish and a lot of the songs on um the album that are like in the beginning they're more upbeat and fun to dance to and then later on the songs are more so worship so soaking in the spirit and things like that i thoroughly enjoy the album i plan to dance at my church to the entire album one day i don't know when but i got plans sis liette you already know <laughs> but um yeah it's it's very very much they do repeat a lot of the words but i think that's the point in that they're repeating it they're meditating on the words and then when you hear the music in the background there's a sound that really just forces you not force in like a harsh way but it kind of pushes you deeper into worship so i i love it love it so much um and i don't know i felt on my heart to play i was actually gonna play a different song from them that was more upbeat but the, the spirit led me to <laughs> play living testimony because that's a song that um has really been on my heart for a while just being a testimony for the people especially in the time that we're in so yes um things i'm using so the Bible I'm using is the Journal of the Word Bible. Let me just get the box. So hopefully, yeah. So it's a New King James Journal of the Word Bible. They have this in different translations. Um, they have the King James and the NIV translation. This is literally the best Bible on earth to me. I love it so much. It's phenomenal. Um, I love the spacing over here to write notes. You can use this Bible, of course, for doing artwork, but I do this type of journaling. So that's the type that I do. Um, the pen I'm using today is the F301 Zebra pen. Um, it's a ballpoint pen. They do have gel pen, but I'm using ballpoint for today. Black ink. I normally would write in blue ink, but I prefer black ink because black just looks better when you're adding color to the text. So, And then my favorite highlighters, of course, are the Zebra Mildliners. Um, they're amazing. A lot of people say midliners. It's called Mildliners. There's an L there. So, yeah. <laughs> but um, the Mildliners are phenomenal. I know some people complain about bleed through, but I don't really have a problem with bleed through. Um, in this Bible, it sort of kind of bleeds through let me just show you but it doesn't bother me per se um in my other bible which i do have a second one of these i can find it where is it where is it um here it is so here is the other one that i have this is again the journal of the word As you can see this is my older version i still use this one of course but this one does not have a lot of bleed through my notes like you can see it doesn't bleed it did shadows but it's not bleeding through so i think with this one they changed the paper in it versus the old one i love my old one of course this one is the teal floral hardcover 
but it was fraying so my sis alicia from the group got me this one which is the brown leather i think it is the brown bonded leather which is really nice um so i'm using this one because i've already studied psalms in my personal bible if i could just show you guys quickly where psalms yeah so like i've already gone through the psalms in my bible this is like all of the psalms i've gone through it in my bible um I'm currently up to Psalm 70 in my Bible. So I couldn't really go through the, the Psalms in this one. So I'm using this one to do that. But um, let me just look at the comments real quick. You're so welcome, Lisa. Yeah, I'm definitely, I love playing music before we study just because it puts us in a mindset and um, it gets us just into the flow of things, if that makes sense. Kind of like a service without being a service. <laughs> but um, so yeah six verses today oh i also have post-it notes these are the ones i'm using right now these are both from walmart so we have this animal this kind of flamingo beachy vibes going and then i have two smaller ones just in case i want to write something short and sweet i also have some paper on hand if i need extra paper i have already done my definitions i'll quickly show you guys right here so that that doesn't take up too much time because i know it takes up a lot of time but let me just grab a few of these markers now. We're going to dive in. I'm going to try to keep this to an hour. So it's 11.25. Um, so I'm hoping to end no later than 12.30, an hour exactly in the study. Sorry, guys. I'm just taking out the highlighters and putting them in front of me. But I want to do this an hour exactly. No longer, prayerfully. But y'all know I like to talk <laughs> and break things down. Yes, I have my coffee. Well, it's an iced coffee that I made because I love my lavender lattes. Y'all know how I feel about that. Um, I will have a video on YouTube for like how I make my lavender coffees. But I do have my homemade lavender vanilla coffee um, in my Starbucks cup because she's pretty and she's rose gold. So <laughs> but I think I'm going to be drinking coffee all day. Um, I actually need some tape too. Let me find some tape real quick. And I found one. Okay, I just had to grab some washi tape real quick so that I can stick my notes inside the Bible. But Psalm 23. So it says, The Lord in the sorry, the Lord the shepherd of his people. It's a Psalm of David. Um, and it's six short verses. That's why I'm hoping and praying we not here too long. But I decided to title it title it The Shepherd and His Sheep. So some quick basic information if you guys don't know. Um, I do have the notes already done. You guys can get that. It's on the blog. Um, it is a total of nine pages. <laughs> nine pages. Um, it's really just how many pages? Four pages. No, excuse me, not four pages. It's not it's actually seven pages of notes, but I use the rose book uh, rose book of bible charts maps and timelines i did a video on that and um they had two charts with breakdowns of psalms 23 so i included those as well but um good morning says okay i'm gonna dive right in <laughs> okay so basic information so psalms 23 is written by king david of course and chronologically i personally wanted to know where in the bible this would have taken place so from the research that i did it said that it took place either in first chronicles 16 or first chronicles 28 around the time of um well before the end of his life basically and the psalm this psalm right here 23 is all about the imagery and seeing god and jesus as our shepherd and ourselves as the sheep so um i'm gonna start so the method of how i do this really quick breakdown for those who are watching this later on in the replay who are new to the group or who are watching this on youtube and don't know how i normally do my studies so what i do in this case i would completely read the entire chapter so chapter 23 is just literally six verses so i would read the entirety of the um the passage so read verses one through six without making any markings just so that i can get a basic understanding of what the text is saying i would then go in and read it again but the second time i'm reading i would circle words that i want to define and these are words that i do know words that i want a better understanding of words that i think i know because i was shocked 
when I went <laughs> and did the definitions for some of these words, I was shocked by what they meant back in their original language. Of course, this is Old Testament, so you would look up the original word in Hebrew. Now, if you can't find the Hebrew definition, then you can go into your Merriam-Webster's dictionary to find the English definition. But I would say if you can get the Hebrew, get the Hebrew, or if you're studying the New Testament, get the Greek. After I do um, my definitions, I would then go through again and pick apart the verses, pick apart the scripture, everything, underline phrases, whatever. After I do that, I would take my notes and then I would add color because I feel like color just makes everything 10 times better. That's probably not the best one to show you, but here we go. <laughs> color just makes everything a lot more better and it's easy for me to see which note goes with what. Um, I know that this underline goes with that and that, that that goes with that and this goes with that and this goes with that. So color keeps it all organized and not frenzied. But we are going to dive in. So Psalm 23, the Lord, the shepherd of his people, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of, sh of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So, like I said, after you do your reading, next thing you do is circle words that you want to have a better understanding of. And again, these could be words you do know, words you don't know. Most of these words, I think all of these words, I know what they mean. But I also want to get an, a true understanding of what it is in the actual context of the um, scripture. So I already wrote my definitions, like I said, for quicker video time. But um, the first word was shepherd. I really wanted to know what a shepherd was. I know that a shepherd takes care of sheep, but exactly what does a shepherd do? What is the purpose of a shepherd? I then circled want. Because I know it's something that we don't have that we really want to have, but like, what is the definition of want? Then I circled leads. I circled still because I really wanted to understand what the word still is. Um... I circle restores and if you have the um packet the the study notes you know which words i circle <laughs> um i circled paths and righteousness i circled walk i circled the word through because i and when i circled that word and defined that word the word through it really really made things a lot more clearer and really helped me to understand the text 10 times better and um really just made me understand that i'm much more stronger than i think that i am but we'll get to that i circled shadow now sometimes some people would circle death i thought about circling death but i didn't but in most cases, I probably should have circled the word death to get a better understanding um, pertaining to this specific text. Um, I circled fear and evil. I then went down and in verse 4, I circled rod, staff, and comfort. And if I'm going a little too fast, let me know. I then circled prepare. I circled anoint, I circled surely, goodness, mercy, I circled follow, dwell, house, and forever. And I know that might seem like <laughs> overkill. One thing you'll learn about me if you, if you haven't, you know, been with me for a while is I really like to break the text down so I do go a little overboard sometimes but it it makes everything flow easier so um, let me get the page with the definitions okay so here we have um, page one of the definitions and for Shepherd when I looked it up it just says one who tends to sheep um, and even though that's like a basic definition the reason why i put it there is because when we go down to break down the actual verse it helped me to understand more so i literally just put one who tends sheep 
for once I couldn't find um, the Hebrew so I left the Hebrew blank I think for three words because I couldn't find the definition but for want it's to be needy to desire to come or go or be to feel need of an inclination to have a strong desire for to suffer from the lack of so I want something because I have a lack of it I don't have it so I want it leads in Hebrew it means to lead or guide to a watering place to bring to a place of rest to refresh or to sustain still is rest quietness comfortable or peaceful restores is to refresh repair to turn back or return to paths was basically track a course of life or a course of action righteousness is what is right just and normal to god walk is basically to enter to wander to live to move along on foot now anything i italicized was um what i found in the english definition because i really wasn't caring too much for what the hebrew word said so i did look it up in english dictionary the webster's dictionary excuse me and um in webster's dictionary it said that to walk is to move along on foot and i thought that was key because following that i had circled the word through and through is a function word to indicate movement excuse me sorry i didn't mean to shake the camera um <laughs> it is a function word to indicate movement into at one point and out of another without stopping for it indicates a period of time. It is also to completion, to conclusion, or accomplishment. So I'm moving on foot to get through a period of time to its completion. Shadow was extreme danger or distress. Fear is to be afraid of, to feel dread, to be frightened of. Evil is adversity distress affliction calamity and displeasure rod is something used for punishing or correcting so correction and punishment a staff is something used for support comfort is to ease have compassion to console and to avenge now that i never would have thought of being what you considered comfort but again i looked it up in the hebrew this is the hebrew word and that's what it said so i wrote it down and then the other words here prepare is to arrange to set or put in order anoint and I, again I'm, i apologize if i'm going too fast you can always go back <laughs> towards when this, when this live session is over and go back to um look at the definitions if you want but um to anoint is a symbol of festivity and joy surely is assertive it's often introducing with emphasis the expression of a truth without doubt certainly goodness is welfare prosperity happiness mercy is kindness and fidelity follow is to pursue attend closely upon dwell is to remain to sit abide and establish house now normally a house to me is like a building but according to this it says family <laughs> shelter dwelling habitation and then forever is continually or always so something that is going to continue to happen on a consistent consistent basis and then i just explained where i get my definitions from because i know a lot of people do ask where i get my breakdowns from so um i use a strong's concordance or i just use a merriam webster dictionary i use a website called biblehub.com um, which has an online concordance and I think it's very very helpful I don't always like to carry my concordance because a concordance is not tiny it is a big hefty book it's like a textbook size and it's a little scary so when I am on my phone I literally just go to biblehub.com or I download the Bible Hub app and they have something called text analysis and it literally will break down the words I have a video coming I know I'm like backlogged on my videos so I'll have a video post it in the group soon about how to use it and also on youtube but we got the definitions out of the way um so again you would write your definitions down on paper just pretend i just spent that time writing it down <laughs> and now i'm just gonna go in with 
color and connect the color. So shepherd, we're gonna do in blue. Let's use gray for once. Um, and you just add color wherever you choose to add cover. I mean, cover color wherever you choose to add the color. <laughs> So I'm gonna just take a minute and just add color. And when you study like this, it's not like a quick two minute type of study. No, studying like this really goes deep. It can take hours. You can do it in minutes and break it down into doing it different, like different days. Sometimes I find when I study the Psalms, I'm breaking them down over the course of two to three days. Because some of these psalms be deep. They be real deep. They be having me in my feelings. <laughs> so. Pass. I'm just dropping highlighters everywhere. And if you don't want to use highlighters, you can use these babies. The Crayola Super Tips. They're also awesome for highlighters. They're like the best. I know a lot of people don't like to use them. I love them. They're amazing. Especially in your Bible. They're the best. And they're extremely cheap. You can get them at Walmart. You can buy the bulk of 50 on um, Amazon. Um, we're just gonna circle these. I probably should have did this off camera too. Probably, but we're not. We're just gonna we're gonna keep going. Again, if I'm going too fast, just let me know. If you have any questions, you can definitely write them and I'll get to them. And I don't color code because I know a lot of people also ask me if I color code. Not when I'm doing my journaling Bible. I literally just, whatever color I feel like using, I use. <laughs> whatever looks nice to the eye, I use. Because even though I'm studying... I want this to also be appealing to my eyes so that when I do go back, I don't feel like I don't want to read my notes. Because I know, I don't know if you guys ever feel this way. Sometimes I will write stuff down and I won't go back to my notes because I just, I don't like the way they look personally. I just, I don't. So I won't go back to my notes. So it gives me a chance to sort of semi be creative while studying the word of God and being organized as well. So you don't have to make a whole color code and think you have to be proper. Have fun with it. I'm just trying to make sure I match <laughs> the right colors so I don't get confused when I go back. Okay. And this was righteousness. Um, whoever has the ability, can you guys approve the person that just um, requested to join in the group? Someone literally just sent the request. <laughs> I'll see if I can quickly... Can I do it? Mm, I don't know. I am almost done. So for evil, did I do evil yet? No, we're going to use brown just because... Um, I think I have two more words. Circle. Goodness of being gray. And I'll do anoint and the color lime, I guess. Okay. 
Let me just see if I can approve this person. I'm not sure if they were approved yet. I'm sorry guys, give me a second to see if this person was approved. But we have all the definitions written down, so you normally would just have all your definitions. And then I color coded the circles to here so that I know what is what. Um all right. So now we're gonna go in and start with verse one. So verse one, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. So there's a lot that I can get just out of that portion alone. So I'm going to underline the entire verse and then I'm going to put a box around is and a box around my. So this is a personal statement that reflects the relationship between David and God. So basically, we should be able to declare that Jesus is our shepherd confidently. But when you look at the word is and my, is basically means it's an ongoing relationship it's not a one-time deal so he's saying the lord is my shepherd this is a continual thing the lord is continually shepherding me leading me guiding me so um let me write can you guys see this is means an ongoing relationship then I'm gonna box that and then right under that I'm gonna put my because my makes it personal it's that God is your personal shepherd that Jesus is your personal shepherd and it's not like a stranger they are personal to you it is a relationship that is ongoing so my makes it personal So from is and from my. Um, so basically, a shepherd cares for, they guide, they nurture, and they protect their sheep. Sheep are also owned by their shepherd, and they fully know the voice and the hand of their shepherd. Um, so then this makes me wonder, if God owns me, does he really own me, or does something else or someone else own me? Um, do I know the voice of God? If God speaks to me, do I know his voice clearly enough? Um, and do I know his hand when I'm going through something? Do I see God's hand in that or am I quick to blame the devil or blame someone else? Um, a sheep really knows their shepherd completely. So I'm going to put, does God own me? Do I know his voice? Do I know his hand? This is letting me know that David had a very personal, ongoing relationship with God to the point that he knew when God was speaking to him. He knew when God's hand was on a situation. Um, so I know I say um a lot, you guys, so I'm still working on it. <laughs> uh, numbers, I'm not sure what's going on, but. I do have cross references. I ain't gonna read them all. We're not gonna read all the cross references. Um, but I will read a few of them. So let me just get my other Bible real quick. What's that? That is 49. I'm sorry, guys, I'm just looking for the scripture. I believe it's John 10, 11. Look. All right, John, John 10, verse 11. Yes, if you read John chapter 10 in its entirety, it talks about Jesus, who is the true shepherd. But I'm specifically going to read verse 11. It says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. 
Um, but I would just suggest you read um, John chapter 10 it's in its entirety as a general cross-reference for Psalms 23. Because it talks about him being the good shepherd. It talks about him being the true shepherd. It talks about how the sheep knows, the shepherd knows his sheep and things of that matter. So we have that. I'm not going to read every cross-reference today. So yeah, but that's that. Then it goes and it says, I shall not want. So it basically lets me know that um, we will have no lack because of God's divine providence. He sustains us. He will always supply our every need. Our personal wants may not be a necessity according to him. So everything we want is not necessarily what we need from God. There are things I'm pretty sure that we've prayed for and asked for that we wanted that really wasn't um, conducive to our spirit. <laughs> so he just didn't give it to us. So um, the questions for that that I, I wanted to pose is, do you know the difference between a want and a need? Do you desire more than what God wants to give you? Do your wants align with his wants? And then where does your supply come from? Because if you have want of anything, then that lets us know that you're basically lacking in something. You're, there's an area in which you're not being supplied enough. And if you have a want, then does that want really align with what God wants you to have? Now, if it doesn't align with what he wants you to have, then where is you? where are you getting your supply from? So I shall not want where does your supply come from? Do you desire more? Than he wants to give you and what i mean by that is um if you desire more than what he wants to give you god obviously wants to give us everything but he does so in portions so are you trying to take more than what he's willing to give you at the time just like god can um show you your future um and visions or whatever but he's not going to give you everything in its entirety he's going to do things in portions so do you want just that portion he wants to give you or do you want the whole thing and think you can handle the whole thing kind of thing um Sorry guys, I'm just looking at the comments. Um, yeah, yes, the Paper Mate color pens are awesome. I love their flare pens and the Ink Joys. I do own them, um, and I just picked up, I know this is going off track, guys, but I just picked up their other pens. These are the Paper Mate Flare Ultra Fine, and they're like a finer point, so I love these as well. I haven't tried them on my Bible yet. I have a video coming soon on my channel about all the pens and stuff, but yes, I love the Paper Mate pens. They're awesome. Um, Steph, the Bible I'm using for my cross references. Okay, so <laughs> I don't just use one Bible. Um, of course, I use my beloved New King James study, uh, not study the word, what am I talking about? Spirit filled life Bible. That Bible I love and I use that because it does have a lot of cross references, but I also use um, the Thompson Chain Reference Bible. I still utilize that Bible, that is still one of my favorite Bibles to use for cross references. But I literally, when I'm looking for cross references, I will, <laughs> I will take out all of my Bibles. <laughs> and go through each of my bibles because all the study bibles that i have have different cross references um so that's how i get them <laughs> so i suggest if you have a study bible if you have more than one look at your study bibles because a lot of them will show you different cross references like some of the cross references that i found for psalms 23 in the thompson chain reference weren't really helpful so i couldn't really utilize that one a lot more so i used my study the word why i keep saying study the word omg the spirit filled life bible i am mainly using for cross references um and then i have 
my women's study Bible. I have my archaeological study. I, yeah, yeah. Every every Bible stuff. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> every Bible you own, if it's a study Bible, look in there. Um, look in the cross references and um, make sure you look through the cross references because sometimes it won't really make sense. They just throw cross references in there, and um, I personally take the time and literally will read through, flip through. I'll even use Google and type in cross references for such and such to um get a better understanding well hopefully that helps okay um i think that is it oh the cross reference for that of course is going to be philippians 4 and 19 for i shall not want so going to verse 2 it says he makes me to lie down in green pastures so for that line here um God knows how to give us rest and we cannot personally rest unless all of our needs are met and God meets every single one of our needs, be it physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. So in God, through Christ, we find ultimate rest. So then the question that I have is, have you ever found true peace outside of Christ? Where have you tried to find rest before, before going to Christ? So if you don't go to God for peace, um, if you don't go to Christ for peace, where do you try to get that peace? And does it really give you true peace or does it give you um, microwavable peace? <laughs> and the cross reference for that is going to be Ezekiel 34 and 14. You guys know I don't always put all of my notes in the Bible, which is why I'm not writing for that line. Um, but the next one says, he leads me beside the still waters. He leads me besides the still waters. So, like I said, we had already defined. Here's my definitions. We just we defined leads, and leads is to lead or guide to a watering place, to bring to a place of rest, to refresh and to sustain. Right. So, and then still was. Where is that word? Where is the word? Okay. <laughs> rest, quietness, comfortable, and peaceful. So, therefore, it's telling me that. God gives divine guidance to the place we can safely go. We can drink deeply of his Holy Spirit, who is the water to our thirsty souls. It's um, also a place, he, he leads us to a place that we can find comfort, where we can have quietness, where he can sustain us. So if you're not being led by him to still waters, then you're clearly being led to troubled waters. So then again, the question is, have you been drinking from still waters or have you been drinking from troubled waters? And I'm actually going to write that as a question. Do I drink? From still waters and still, again, the definition that I found was rest quietness comfortable and peace so am i drinking from the things that will bring give me rest am i drinking from the things that will give me that quietness that comfort that peace and the only thing that can give you that is god and you can get that through his holy spirit and through your relationship with christ or are you drinking from troubled waters which are those things that um are basically opposite of still waters Cross reference for that is going to be Revelation 7 and 17. Sorry about the camera shaking. No, Steph, you're not. Um, <laughs> you're definitely not. I definitely uh, will pull out every single one of my Bibles one by one and start looking through the cross references. <laughs> now, the cross references that pop up the most in most of my Bibles, I would definitely utilize that one. But again, sometimes the cross references do not match. So then I have to go and look and read things up myself. Um, okay, so verse three, he restores my soul. So a shepherd will help the sheep stand again when they are stuck on their backs or struggling to get up. They call it being cast down um, when a sheep is like flipped over. But as such, God is always there to help us get back up. When we are empty, he will He will refill us. When we are weak, he will give us strength. When we are tired, he will energize us. When we are depleted, he will refresh us. He will always bring us back to our original state. Then it says, he leads me in the paths of righteousness. So as creatures of habit, we are definitely people of habit, um, we tend to continually go down the wrong path and or do the wrong things. Sometimes it's on purpose and sometimes it's unintentionally 
Um, but God has already marked a path for us to walk down and to live by before we were ever conceived. It is safer to simply follow and allow him to lead us. So then the question is, what path are you walking down? Do you feel convicted in the path that you're walking down? Or do you feel at peace in what you're doing and what you have in mind to do? Um, the cross references for that is going to be Psalms 5 and 8. And then also Psalm 31 and 3. Then it says, for his name's sake. So basically, we need to honor God by following the path that he laid out for us. So is what you're doing bringing glory to his name? Is how you're living bringing light into the world? How can you make what you do bring glory to God? Um, so example for me, I used to make YouTube. I've, I've been on YouTube for <laughs> since like 2009. Um, I started out on YouTube with a very older beauty channel that I did. But um, when I was on that beauty channel, I really wasn't doing anything to edify the people, to edify the, um, the kingdom of God. And then I started a vlog channel when I did get pregnant. And um, a lot of you ladies have gone and <laughs> checked out those videos and saw how i was spiritually definitely it just wasn't nothing there um i haven't been on either one of those channels in a minute <laughs> but then i created doi with the help of god um and with this channel with the platform with this group i have the opportunity to edify people i have the opportunity to to, to give to share my testimony and help other people get out of whatever they're going through or encourage people and teach people how to really get into the word of god for themselves because a lot of people don't know how and it can be complicated i know for me i struggled what am i doing i forgot to add my color so while i'm adding my color i'll continue talking <laughs> but i know for me i struggled um trying to study the word everybody would say you know open up your bible i tried to start at genesis it didn't work um i remember my mom i think it was my mom or somebody from my old church they told us to start with the psalms and then read matthew and i tried that and it just didn't work for me um it wasn't until 2016 my mom had got me my first actual bible um and i had that bible for a year before i you know really dove in and it was after i think it was a service that i went to can't really recall but I just had got to the point where I was fed up personally with the struggle. And I feel like a lot of the times people need to be personally fed up. People can pray for you. They can travail for you. They can tell you what to do. But it's not until you get to that point of I'm personally sick of it. I'm personally fed up. I'm personally ready for a change that you will go and make that change. And I got to that point and um, I started doing this type of Bible study. First, actually, I started using regular Bible and writing out my notes. And then I learned along the way that you can journal the word. And um, it has changed my life tremendously. And I love teaching it to other people to help other people really dive into the word for themselves. So I utilize my platforms to edify the kingdom and to help the kingdom grow. Edify the kingdom? No, edify the people <laughs> and to help the kingdom grow. Um, I just want to add my color. My eyes were bugging out for a second. Okay. I am very grateful for that, Lisa. Um, I definitely wanted a place where people could come and really learn because I used to watch a lot of Christian YouTubers, as they call themselves, on YouTube. And um, one thing I noticed is that they were really lacking videos that were real and authentic. And I think a lot of people think being a Christian is all about, um, some people think it's glamorous, depending on if they go to a mega church. And then some people think you have to be completely perfect. You don't have to be perfect. You guys know my struggles. You guys, <laughs> I, I tell you, we, we have conversations about the things that I, you know, go through. And recently in the, the I think it was a prayer wall video, I talked about um, the whole lust and all that. I try to be real authentic mm -hmm. with this channel. Um, and it, it is a struggle, but the Bible tells us that we should speak with one another. Um, that we should be able to confide in one another because it also helps us to grow and to get out of whatever we're dealing with. 
and it's a struggle i know for me <laughs> i know that for me personally i need to get to that that comfortability with um personally doing it in my church i get nervous <laughs> for some reason i guess it's it's different from for me because when i personally know people and i get ready to share my testimony i've had people before i mentioned this before when i would tell certain people certain things they would look at me like i was lying and stuff like that so now i just have this thing like when i tell people that i personally know i get real nervous so that's why i feel like youtube is like a safe haven for me per se but it's also helping me um step out of the box and um become a better leader even within my ministry so I'm very grateful that you were able to learn from my channel um, and just glean in general and take things to grow. Um, morning, Tasha. <laughs> I'm very, very grateful for that, Tasha, and I am so so excited for you and sis angela of course with what you guys are doing like you guys top notch what y'all are doing i'm loving it see tasha for me it's different i'm very bold on the camera but in church i'm very shy um <laughs> very shy i am slowly breaking out of that box because i'm getting used to speaking to people but again i think in my mind it's more so for me i know people personally so when i know you personally it I don't know i feel like when i share things it might be looked at differently even though i know that's not the case with my ministry that i'm at now but um you know growing up in the ministry that i did grow up in and just the things that i went through i always felt like i couldn't really be open with people the youtube is helping me you know grow out of that facebook definitely helping me grow out of that <laughs> um my computer just froze Okay. what time is it it's 12 5 okay trying to be done by 12 30 <laughs> the latest um all righty so oh we're done with this verse so yeah i think for his name's sake i'm going to actually write how can what i do bring him glory I want everything I do, everything I say to really bring God um, glory. Okay, moving on to verse four. So this is a verse that when I actually looked up the definition of these words, it really hit me a lot differently. Um, so it says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So the word through... When we looked it up, um, it said it's a function word. Let me actually show you guys the actual meaning of what it said when I looked it up. So, through. Um, according to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, through is a function word to indicate movement into at one point and out of another. It's without stopping for. It indicates a period of time. And it also means to completion, conclusion, or accomplishment. And to walk is to move along on foot, okay? So, it says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So, yea, though I walk through. I'm going to break this down. So, yea, though I walk through that part alone. There are things that we cannot avoid. We will have to go through them and not just around or under them. The word through indicates that we will come out on the other side of whatever it is that we are facing. So, whatever we're dealing with, even though we have to deal with it, we can't avoid it. We can't go around it. We have to continue to walk through it without stopping. To get through something, you have to continue going forward and not stop. If you stop, then you're at a standstill. You're stagnant. So I thought that was really interesting um, when I was able to fully break that down. Because I read this. I've, I've heard that verse many times. I've read that verse many times. But um, breaking down that word and really getting an understanding that it's an indication of a function like it's something it's, you, it's something you do it's a function and um it indicates a period of time it's something that i have to do without stopping for and that i will come out in the end really just encouraged me um so then the question for that that i thought about is um 
what do you need to currently get through are you dealing with something right now that you think you can't get through but you really are going to get through and then in this season that you're in how can you be patient enough while you're going through um and then i have the valley of the shadow of death as the second part so for this let me write my thoughts before i forget I'm going to put, I have to keep moving without stopping to come out in the end. Um, this is literally just a personal thought that I just thought of. So the valley of the shadow of death, basically we will face some hard times, some difficult circumstances and fearful experiences in life. But having God in our lives does not exempt us from life's harshness. Um, just because we're Christians doesn't mean we're not going to go through. And a lot of people fail to understand that. Um, they think that they're safe from going through. They think that they're safe from dealing with certain things. Trust me, there are things in my life that I feel like, why did I have to go through them? I should not have went through them. But a lot of the times, the things that we go through, are it's it's not for us. It's more so so that we can become a vessel for other a vessel for God to speak to other people to get them out, if that makes sense. Hopefully what I said makes sense. It made sense in my head. But um, what I went through, I don't think I deserved to go through it. I don't think I should have gone through it. But because of what I went through, including the bondage of depression for 10 years, I'm able now to share my testimony, witness to other people, and help other people to get out of it. So we're going to face some hard times. Jesus faced a lot of hard times. A lot. <laughs> they killed him. Okay. But um, thank God he rose again on the, you know, on the third day. But he went through for us so that we can be reconciled back to God. So we're going to go through, not always because of something that we've done. It's just the course that we have to go. We have to walk through the certain things that we have to go through. We have to go through the certain things we have to go through in order to, to um, be a witness, in order to help other people, in order to edify Thank you, mommy. <laughs> but um, we definitely will have to go through some things. And again, the shadow is basically, where's the definitions? Um, shadow is extreme danger and distress. You guys can see here. So shadow, extreme danger and distress. So we're going to have to go through some dangerous things. We're going to have to go through some stressful things. It, it's just, we have to. And, and going through those things, we not only are able to help other people get out, but God is molding us to become what it is that he is calling us to become. So for me, if I wouldn't have gone through what I went through, um, I would not be an evangelist. Now, granted, I ran for years from being an evangelist. So now things are coming at me like left and right quickly, real quick. But you have to go through those things in order to become who it is that God already ordained you to become. Um, again, he knew us before we were conceived. He already had our our life plan already set before we were born so um i'm going to put i will face hard times <laughs> it's as simple as that so yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death it says i will fear no evil i'm going ahead of myself See, i'm going a little too quick let me just do that first okay so i will fear no evil Basically, God banishes all evil and all fear. Where there are shadows, there is light. The only fear we need is that of reverence and awe, awe towards God. The spirit of fear was not given to us and neither should it dwell in us. God already knows and deals with our fears, doubts, and anxiety. We just need to cast them upon him and walk with our head held high. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Had to cough. But, um... Yeah, we have no reason to fear. The only fear we need to have is that of reverence unto God. Unto God. I mean, I think it's Proverbs 1 and 7. I think. Don't quote me on that. Did I write that? I didn't put that cross-reference in here. But I think it's Proverbs 1 and 7. Hopefully I'm right. If I'm not, I'll put the right scripture. <laughs> but um, 
yeah we the only that's the only fear we need we don't need to fear in a in a sense of um to be to have like dread towards something that's not that's not of god so if we have that type of fear then it's definitely from the enemy and we need to reevaluate exactly what it is now evil in this sense is adversity distress affliction calamity displeasure so we have no reason to be afraid of those things that bring distress we have no reason to be afraid of the things that um afflict us that bring us displeasure because we have a god who will protect us we have a god who will um consistently care for us so um, you for you are with me, it says right here for you are with me. Um, so his presence is key to our safety and provision. Without God, there is no guarantee of safety. Now, I'm not saying he's going to purposely let you go through something and get harmed in like a crazy way. But <laughs> without God, there is no guarantee of safety. I know I used to do some dumb things some dumb things like when i think about it, i'm just like why did i do that why did i think that was cool but um i was protected thank god but a lot of the times i dealt with consequences because i chose not to walk in the way that he wanted me to walk to walk down that path he already ordained i decided personally that i wanted to veer off and go into my own way so then it says your rod and your staff they comfort me so uh, he will do all that he can to guide save and bring us comfort but we must be open to it and accept it you have to be open and you have to be willing to accept it um the thing that i learned that i thought was interesting because rod and staff a lot of the times we automatically think it's the same thing it's literally a stick used at shepherd hat shepherd's hat but the rod and the staff are used for two completely different things so the rod was used to protect the sheep from predators so god defends us he protects us from predators right rod used for protection so that's the first thing he had was the rod the second thing was the staff and the staff was used to redirect to gently nudge to hold the sheep in place or to correct a sheep without harm so therefore that lets me know that god corrects me with a reason and for purpose and he does it gently he doesn't do it to harm me he corrects me with care sometimes he will have you at a standstill again the staff was used to hold a sheep at times right where they were so they wouldn't be harmed or wouldn't walk off or wouldn't veer off into whatever danger they were seeking to get into so um I don't even know where I'm going to write that at, but we're going to leave it like that for now. I ain't got no space. I ain't got no space to write it. But, um, yeah. So just know that even though I know, because like I said, for me, when I used to read it, I'm like, it's the same stick. It's a stick that they use. They walk with the stick. But no, the rod and the staff are two completely things used for two completely different um, reasons. So... Going on to verse 5, it says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. So the first portion is you prepare a table before me. So even in the valley, God gives us his divine protection. Even at our lowest points, God gives us divine protection. For me, I haven't gone into that testimony yet with um, suicide, but there were times when I was in my depression that I did try to kill myself. Um, and I'll never forget the one day I went to church and my bishop... <laughs> So spoke to me about that and how he had a vision of me sitting in the dark with my hoodie on with the knives and the, the, the scissors and stuff under my bed. I never could forget that. That That is literally stuck in my head. But um, yeah, there were times where I literally would take a knife and I would press it to my arm, but it would not it would not cut no matter how much pressure I applied to it. I'm going to do that testimony video because I know a lot of you guys are waiting on those videos. They're coming back soon. But um, yeah. I would never forget that and if it wasn't for his protection in the midst of me being in my valley no telling what or where i would be but um yeah so he you prepare a table for me even in the valley he gives us divine protection he will provide for every hunger that you have he will give you peace in the middle of a disaster an example right the, the the best example i can give is right now in the midst of this pandemic i'm pretty sure we're all dealing with something um be it a personal like relation to someone who's had it someone who's died from it whatever the case may be but um i think as believers we should be able to find peace in the middle of this pandemic um and it sounds crazy i know 
but I personally, I know for me, it's very heartbreaking to consistently hear about someone dying or someone getting it or someone being in a hospital. But I have such a peace knowing who my father is, knowing who my protector is in the midst of this troubling time. Um, so when I said that he will provide for every hunger that you have, um, hunger as in your desire, things that you yearn for. So then the question I have for you is what do you hunger for? Um, because if you prepare a table, clearly he's preparing a table to feed you, <laughs> right? Um, so what is it that you're hungering for? Then it says, in the presence of my enemies, he doesn't. So in the presence of my enemies, I'm keep, I'm keep one ahead of myself. <laughs> so you prepare a table before me. Even in the dark times. He will protect me. In the presence of my enemies. So for this, God doesn't eliminate the problem. <laughs> but in the midst of it, you experience his greatness and his promises. So have you ever been in a situation where you're praying to God to remove something? It, it reminds me of Paul. I think it was Paul who was asking God to remove a thorn from his side. Was it Paul? I feel like it was Paul, but it probably wasn't Paul. But if I, I think it was Paul, who was asking God to remove the thorn from his side and, and uh, God didn't remove the thorn. But in the presence of that thorn, um, he was able to, Paul was able to experience some greatness. So even in the midst of whatever you're going through, um, you're going to, I, I know. Sorry guys, that's my mom checking up on the top. <laughs> Because at one o'clock, I actually have a leadership teaching to go to with my church. So that's why I'm trying to get through. <laughs> but um, in the presence of your enemy, so God doesn't eliminate the problem. A lot of the times he's he's going to prepare that table for you. He's going to feed you in the dark times in the midst of your enemies. A lot of the times he does that because he wants people to see who he is. Um, it's kind of like the situation with, um, oh my God, the Israelites dealing with the Egyptians in the presence of their enemies. God had to show his power. So um, hopefully that made sense. <laughs> uh, moving on. Oh, yes, yeah, so we're almost done. So you anoint my head with oil. Um, thank you, Jen. Definitely. Okay, so it was Paul. Okay, because sometimes I get confused. I'm glad you're enjoying this, Kimberly. Yes, Lisa. There's definitely something about this time where um, Christians, especially those that we, th those of us claiming to be true believers, we we need to be at peace. Um, it's gonna hurt the things that are go that's going on in this time. I know, like on Facebook, I'm finding out people that I know left and right were sick with it. They've been in a hospital. Um, but I know who I, I know who God is. Um, there's a reason for this pandemic. There is a reason for uh, everything being shut down. Um, we just have to see the reason and look beyond what's in front of us um, and open up our spiritual eyes. But um, it says, you anoint my head with oil. So oil for sheep was used to heal the skin. It was used as a repellent against bugs. For us, the oil is used to keep us safe, to restore our spirits, to heal those broken places that can only be seen with the spiritual eyesight. Um, so that is that. And then it says, my cup runs over. So with God, we remain spiritually full and have an everlasting supply. We are never truly in need of anything as long as we have the well that never runs dry. We need to continually seek him to be refilled. <clears throat> so how full is your cup? Um, and this was a question I actually had on the, the sheet, but if God filled your cup according to your faith, how much would you have in your cup? And, that, and that's a serious question because a lot of the times we say we believe God. But um, if he was to actually give you a cup and fill it with your faith, how much faith would your cup be filled with? Because I know for me in certain circumstances, I'm, in certain situations, I'm just like, I, I say I have faith. But in the back of my mind, I'm doubting the things that he's told me i'm doubting because of what i personally see so that's a good question um that you can ponder on so um moving on to the last verse verse six so it says surely goodness and mercy shall follow me so there is a certainty because surely means it's without a doubt so there's a certainty that both happiness and prosperity will chase after you if you abide in god 
So if you don't abide in God, there's no certainty that it's going to be there. But if you abide in God, you commune with Christ, there's a certainty that you're going to have happiness and be prosperous. You may be dealing with the situation right now. It may look really, really terrible. But just know, if you follow God, you abide in him. Surely, as it says, surely you will have it. It will chase after you because to follow, it says, where's my definitions? Lord, help me. I'm just going to look in here. So um, to follow, it means to pursue, to attend closely upon, follow, to pursue, attend closely upon, to follow is what to follow is. So it's going to chase after you as long as you abide in him. So then the question is, um, do you ever doubt and where does that doubt come from? I know that I doubt certain things and doubt doesn't come from God. It's not of God. Um, so then it makes me wonder exactly why the enemy is trying to get me to doubt or if someone has caused me to doubt, why are they getting me to doubt something? Then it says all the days of my life. So this is just letting me know as long as I live both physically and spiritually, all the days of my life, your life doesn't end when you die. We all know that it's technically the beginning for Christians. So physically and spiritually is all the days of your life. Then at the end, it says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So on earth and in heaven, we will always be children of God. We will always be co-heirs with Christ. And um, this lets me know that I have a spiritual bank. We all have spiritual banks. And our spiritual banks are overwhelmed in continual riches and wealth. But we need to access it and withdraw from it. Um, don't be like them people that just let their bank accounts, you know, pile up and pile up and pile up. And they be having thousands upon thousands and millions upon millions, but they never use it. It becomes useless because it's just sitting in the bank. It's not doing anything for you. It's just sitting there. Our spiritual bank is there. We need to access it and withdraw from it when we need it. So I didn't write everything here because I ain't got no space. So I hope that helped. <laughs> <laughs> but um, real quick, I'm going to run through what we can basically take out of Psalms 23. So the first thing is that God through Christ deals with our hunger, anxiety, fear, and friction to give us rest. We need to be confident in God's grace, trust in God and not in our circumstances, to walk in faith even when it looks tough, that we will come out in the end on the promise that he made and he said. So even though we have to go through situations, in the end, we're coming out of it. We need to follow the path that he has set for us. He alone sustains us and we need to have total dependency on him. We can expect him to care for us. Um, we need to rest knowing that he will refresh, walk with and comfort us, that he'll nourish us and protect us. And then that he will always ensure our well-being. And then here are just a few questions you can ponder on. Um, again, if God filled your cup according to your faith, how much would you have in your cup? What is sustaining you at this moment? Are you walking in and by faith? Whose path are you following or walking down? What are you depending on? Do you access your spiritual bank account? And do you replenish your spiritual bank account? And again, your spiritual bank account, accessing that is um, basically you access it through prayer. You access it through studying your word. You replenish it the same way you replenish your bank account by studying your word and praying and communing with God. So to access and replenish the bank account is the same thing um, through your communion with God. Um, and then I just the definition. So. Real quick, I want to run through these. Um, this is from the Rose Book of Bible Charts, Maps, and Timelines, the first volume. But um, on page 117, if you have the notes, it literally, i give you all the information. Um, there's a chart called Shepherd Imagery in the Bible, where it goes through the Old Testament and the New Testament. And then also they have another page. Where is it? This one which talks about the shepherd's duties and Jesus's actions. Um, so like the duty of a shepherd, they lead the sheep to, to safe pasture and water. God calls, excuse me, Jesus calls the disciples to follow him wherever he leads. The shepherd protects the sheep from predators, pests, parasites, and other sheep and other natural dangers. Jesus, Jesus he warms, intercedes, and rescues us. Shepherds feed the sheep. God I keep saying God. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jesus, he fed the crowd. Um, he himself is the bread of life. The shepherd cares for the weak or sick lambs. 
Jesus cares for the weak and the sick. The shepherd disciplines wayward sheep and retrieves the lost. Jesus rebukes his disciples and finds those who have lost their ways. The shepherd protects um, protects cultivated lands and crops from the sheep. Jesus guides his disciple in the way of caring about others. Shepherds prevent overgrazing. Jesus teaches his disciples to be wise and harmless. So those are just some things um, that I found in one of my many resources. But again, I do have the notes available. Um, it's nine pages. It's just four bucks. Um, it, it was almost 10 pages, but we kept it short. Yes, we did. Um, I didn't complete all my notes, so I'm definitely going to have to go back personally to finish my notes. <laughs> but I do have a time frame because I, again, have to go to a class in like 30 minutes with my church. So that is it. I pray this was helpful. I pray um, you ladies were able to gain something from this today. The next psalm we will do is going to be Psalm 121, I believe. So I'm going to start working on those notes to have that up. Um, I think it's Psalms 121. I did start the, the, let me see. Yes, I did. So the next one we're going to do is Psalm 121. I started my notes and stuff like that, but that is it for today. Um... You are so welcome, Jenny. <laughs> I am so glad. I will have to come back and fill my notes in and stick my definitions in here. But um, I'm going to quickly pray us out. God, we thank you for this time that we were able to spend with one another. We thank you for the chance to study your word and really break down Psalms 23. I pray that we are able to leave here being more confident in our relationship. I pray that we access our spiritual bank accounts. I pray that we make sure that we um, cultivate our relationship with you and our relationship with Christ and that we begin to walk down the path that you have set for us. Um, and I pray that we each have a blessed day and that we abide in you continually. Amen. So that is all for today. <laughs> we will be back next week at 11 a.m. for Psalms 121. I might log on a little earlier than 11 a.m. just to play worship music. Um, because I, I definitely do want to start the studies at 11. Um, Thank you, Steph. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, sis, Liette. <laughs> sis, like I said, we're going to have to, we going to, I can't wait till this, this quarantine self-isolation is over. I'm, I'm, I'm just ready to go. I'm ready to get out and study with my church family again. I miss you guys. But, um, yeah, that is it. So, I don't mean to, like, be quick, ladies, but I do got, like, 30 minutes to myself before I got to get on. <laughs> because we are having a, um video chat video disc video chat meeting class type thing going on so yeah um i'm gonna end it here if you guys have any questions of course you can post it in the group oh also newsletter i'm gonna be working on a newsletter i know it's been like months since i sent the last newsletter out i was working on it i wanted to send it out today but i didn't so i'm gonna hopefully work on that so that i can have it out monday and then i'm gonna go back to sending those out every other saturday instead of every saturday but um yeah that is it and I'll see you all, I guess, next week. <laughs> Bye.